Hi everyone, this is Brian Neal again. This is the third video in our Swing Trading Beginners course. And this covers one of the most vital skills that you need to know, risk management. And if you don't get this right, especially if you day trade, if you don't get this right, you will um, lose money and probably lose your account at some point. With swing trading, you can get away with bad risk management, but it's not advisable and it will likely result in losing money. Uh, again, I'm Brian Neal, founder of TradeBeFree.com and InvestBeFree.com, and I've been using the techniques I'm going to show you later in this course for the past 12 years successfully. And I just want to point out, too, that we're members of the Better Business Bureau with an A-plus rating, and we've been with them for uh, a few years now, since 2006. Okay, earlier in this program, we talked about the trading ladder or ladders of success. And by that, I mean you want to learn at least a couple of good trading setups Okay, that are proven. You want to practice trade those until consistent. You know, go to a live account with a small uh, amount of money initially. You want to review the trades, each trade you make, and correct any errors. And then over time, you want to scale up and make the big money. So that's the general process of becoming a very good swing trader and making a lot of money. So you want to understand that and realize that you don't take uh, you know that first step and then go all the way up to the top step that's not advisable and you, know, you want to make sure you understand and know the strategy very well and all the rules and strategy and be sure to practice trade it first for a substantial amount of time making sure that you're consistently profitable and that was the whole idea behind explaining that but start with a couple really good strategies and perfect those first on paper or on a simulator without real money before you uh, move to a live account, okay? Okay, now risk management. Um, that is actually a part of risk management in that you want to, you don't want to risk anything initially until you know what you're doing. And that's a great thing about trading is that you can do that. With most businesses, you can't do that. You know, if you want to try a restaurant, for instance, well, you got to put a few hundred thousand dollars into capital, a building, hiring people, coming up with a, a good concept, and a lot of time and effort that goes into that. And you can spend all that money and find out that people just don't like the restaurant. And, uh, you know, over time, it just doesn't work. So with most businesses, that's how it works. Okay, with trading, it's different. And you can actually practice trade without real money, uh, prove out your strategy first. And that's a very, very big advantage you have over other businesses. So you want to take advantage of that. Okay. I want to point out, too, that there's other concepts here that we need to know, and if we don't use risk management wisely, that we'll likely lose money, especially early on. We don't fully understand market trends, and when a setup will no longer work consistently, I'm going to get that to that later in this course when we talk about continuation patterns, but there's certain key things you need to look for in the overall market uh, as signs that the market is falling into a new downtrend, and once the market falls into a new downtrend, unless the industry that the stock is in that we're trading, you know, those continuation patterns will no longer work, okay? And again, I'm going to talk about that in more detail later on, all right? But um, you need to understand risk management. If you if you day trade, like I said, if you day trade and you don't use good risk management, you can blow up your account and do so quickly, okay? One good rule of thumb with risk management is to not risk more than 1% to, 1 to 3% of your trading capital per trade when swing trading. Again, before you start, you want to be... You want to separate your retirement funds, your other funds, um, your bank account from your trading account. And you want to know exactly how much you're going to put into your trading account. Okay, and that's your limit of what you what you risk. You know, of course, unless you're using margin, which is uh, introduces introduces more risks, which I'll talk about later. But you know, bottom line is you want to separate your trading capital from the rest of your money. Okay. And you do that by opening up the trading account, which we talked about in the prior video. But once we do that, we want to you know, not risk more than 1% to 3% of your trading capital per trade when swing trading. That's a good rule of thumb. Okay, another good thing to do when you're trading and you want to use good risk management is you know, don't come up with your stop loss point based on what you want to make in a trade. Okay, You have to look at, look at the technical setup first. Know the optimum stop loss point for that setup. And then work from there. Okay, so you want to find out what the entry point is, where the technical stop loss point is, find out what that percentage is, 
and then calculate how many shares to buy uh, in that trade, okay? To not risk more than 1% to 3% of your trading capital in that trade, all right? It's easy to, to go for a big score in a trade and say, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and just put a tight stop loss of, say, 1% or 1.5% to adhere to my, my, uh, my risk management rules that I have, okay? And that's a mistake because that, you know, 1.5% stop loss point, it means nothing. It means nothing to the market. It means nothing to the market players. And there's a good chance that it won't work, okay? So don't, don't do that. Instead, find out what the optimal stop loss point is for that trading setup, uh, that strategy, and then work back from there as to how many shares you should buy and how much money you should put in that trade, risking no more than a maximum of 1% to 3% of your trading capital, okay? That's an important thing to, to do and understand, okay? A lot of people get caught up in, you know, trying to t uh, target a certain amount in each trade, and they don't realize that um, you, know, you can't just throw in an arbitrary stop-loss point, okay? Because there, there's going to be pullbacks, and and very likely that entry point will be tested, and you got to know what that, that uh, ideal stop-loss point is. Okay, another thing I want to point out, too, is that uh, on the best setups, okay, with the best risk-reward ratio, which I'll get to later, and the best upside potential, you want to, you know, go more towards 2% to 3% risk. And um, for the the, uh, the setups that aren't quite as good, you know, you want to put less into those trades. Okay, so keep that in mind, too. Okay, so to give you an example of how this would work, if you have a $6,000 trading account, let's say, and you're playing with a 3.5% stop loss because that's what the trading setup calls for, so the ideal technical stop loss point is 3.5% below the ideal entry point. You know, you can put in $3,000 into that position and still be okay because we take 3.5% of the 3,000, that's about $100, which is less than 2% of the overall trading account. So now we know we can put $3,000 into that position, and then we can divide that $3,000 by the stock price to find out the number of shares we should buy uh, for that trade. Now keep in mind too, you need to have a limit for the amount that you want to trade in each position. You might, you should set a, a guideline for that too because there is some overnight risk. You know, we generally trade better quality stocks, so that overnight risk is lower, but there's always a chance the stock can gap lower below the 3.5% stop loss if you're holding the stock overnight. So you want to take that into account too, and you might want to set and you should set a limit size for the maximum amount you want to put into any one position to uh, put in place. It might be 20%. You know, we go up to a third because, you know, again, we're trading stocks with the rising estimates that tend to beat those estimates, and those tend to um, have more support as they pull back. Okay. Now, if you're trading stocks under $10 uh, or penny stocks and also penny stocks, then you know, that stock, there's a good chance that stock uh, could be halted at some point and it, a, a better chance that the stock will open up a gap a lot lower than our stop loss point. So that's going to happen more often on stocks below $10. And you want to keep that in mind if you want to, you know, go that route. Okay, another thing about risk management is that in general, the lower the price of the stock, the greater the risk. Okay. So usually the reward is better, but you can also make big gains on stocks between, say, $10 to $40 and higher with much less risk, all right? It depends on the volatility of the stock, uh, but usually stocks between those price levels have a better business, uh, more established, and have less downside risk, in, percentage risk in most cases. Now, again, if you get under, if you get under $10 and especially under $5, that risk goes up quite a bit, okay? But again, the, the initial risk that you should be making on each trade is zero until you learn and use technical analysis, candlestick charting, support and resistance, chart patterns, and trend analysis. Okay, ideally on multiple time frames. All right, so again, we wanna take advantage of the fact that we can practice trade without risking any real money, all right? And I also wanna point out too that the lower the volume of a stock, and this is the number of shares trading hands on average each day, 
the riskier the trade and the less reliable technical analysis becomes. Okay, so we like to look at stocks trading at least 200,000 shares per day, ideally over 400,000 sh shares per day um, in that $20 to $60 price range usually. Um, we can go lower than that, that 200,000 threshold if the stock is over $60. But in general, it's, that's where we want to uh, we want to have the volume um, at least at that point. And there's some strategies too where we like to uh, keep the the volume above 400,000 shares trading hands. And if it's on a catalyst or if we're trading a, uh, an earnings event, let's say, uh, we want to see you know 300 to 500,000 shares trading in the first five minutes of the day. So it depends on the strategy, but in general for our swing trading strategies, we want to see stocks trading over 200,000 shares per day. And again, that's a little bit lower than most traders out there. And that's because, again, we focus on those stocks above, primarily above a certain price point and definitely stocks that are over, um, over delivering, you know, on earnings with rising future expectations, which again, tends to put a, um, tends to buoy the stock. Okay. So here's some more good tips for you too. The, a well-known trader once said that when you trade, you are in the probability business, okay, meaning that you succeed when you trade great setups with excellent risk-reward ratios based mostly on technical analysis and a high probability of success, okay? And this, by doing this, we actually reduce our risk, okay? So that's why I'm uh, telling you this, okay? Uh, trade the best and forget the rest is a good motto to have. You want to trade the very best setups, and the marginal ones, you may as well just, you may want to forget, um, you know, unless the market is trending very strongly that day or that week. And there's other factors, you know, that, that come into play too. But, um, you know, if you stick to the best trading setups, okay, you, you'll tend to have a little lower risk. Okay. And also, in my experience, most setups that I'm going to talk about later in this course and other swing trading setups are generally more successful on stocks above or near the 200-day moving average, okay, especially when that 200-day moving average is sloping upward. All right, and this is counterintuitive to, to many traders when they first start off. Most people feel like, oh, well, the price is a lot lower, so I'm going to buy it now before it, it goes to $50 or $100 because Facebook's already $100. And somehow they, they have this belief that if they buy a stock at a low price, it's going to go higher because another stock did. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And, you know, most IPOs, most stocks, when they, they go public and they start trading, they're in that, you know, 10 15 to $40 range. And they tend to go higher fairly early in their, their life. And the ones that go lower and go below that $10 threshold and stay there, or they go below the $10 threshold, tend to stay there if they don't come out of that, that uh, price range soon. So you've got a lot of stocks in the stock market, most of them, that are really not going to go anywhere in the long term, okay? And the reason why it's below $10 is because it's not a really good stock investment. Now, it may be a good business. It may be good for the owners. Yeah, you may get paid well if you work there, and they may do great things. But in general, if they have great prospects for the future and are a good stock uh, for longer term swing trading that we do, which is mostly, you know, a few days to a few weeks or more, you know, really those stocks aren't really, they're not really going to help us as, as traders and stock investors. Okay. So we want to find those stocks above the 200 day moving average and, you know, the price range generally above $10 and where that 200 day moving average is sloping upward. We want to find stocks that are trending higher if we're going long. And, you know, most most uh, of our trading strategies are long, although we do have some short trading tra strategies, too, that really are probably more successful on the lower price stocks. Okay, so sticking with those stocks above the 200 day moving average, that are trading higher if we're going long, uh, reduces our risk in most trading strategies. And that's true of double bottoms, rounding bottoms, uh, you name it. If you pick those those setups where the stock is already above the 200 day moving average, that will help your lower your risk on each trading setup. Okay, now I want to talk about margin and options. Now, one thing I want to keep in mind, keep in mind when you use margin, 
because a lot of people don't talk about this, they don't tell you this, but you can also not only lose the money that you you trade when you use margin, you can also lose more. If you get in situations where you're leveraging 5 to 1 or 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, it can get pretty dicey quickly, especially in stocks under $5 that could get halted any time that are just more risky and more volatile. So you can, you know, if you lose 20% when you have 5 to 1 margin, okay, and you, you're using a whole account for that, um, it goes down 20% and you're wiped out. You want to keep that in mind. Um, margin is risky. And, you know, a lot of people want to use it anyways. And, you know, you just want to keep in mind what your risk level is for each trade. And, you know, if you need to go above the 3% risk threshold, make sure you know what that is and stick to it and go with very high percentage trades because, you know, with the margin, it accelerates the uh, profits to the upside. It also accelerates um, losses to the downside. And if you get a string of losses, a few losses, you could lose quite a bit of your trading capital. So you want to know, again, what your limits are for the percentage that you're going to risk in each trade and also how much you're, you're going to put into of your trading account that you're willing to put up, put into each trade. Is it, you know, a third, 20%, 10% of your trading capital that you're willing to risk in each trade? You got to define that too because each stock, you know, could go a lot lower and gap below current price, whether it opens next day below that price or whether it's halted during the day, which often happens in those stocks under uh, $5 especially. Now, buying options does eliminate this problem of this increased risk because you can't lose more if you're buying options. You can't lose more than the, the option price. But also realize that the value of the option goes down constantly if the price and volatility stay the same. And that makes it even more difficult to become profitable. And if you're day trading, you know, you got to realize that, you know, that the profit margins are smaller and, you know, that, that option pr value goes down during the day as well, even if the price of the underlying stock stays the same. So uh, that's the disadvantage of using options. And it certainly makes it more difficult to become profitable. You know, we don't use options. We do occasionally, but only on the very best setups. Okay, here's my final thoughts on risk management. It's the number one skill you need to learn and use on each trade. Okay, you have to have a list of rules for yourself uh, with risk management. Okay, you can have a, certainly have a range, you know, if you want to risk up to 3% or 2%, you know, make that range of 1% to 2% or 1% to 3% in each trade. You know, uh, whatever that range is for you, it can be a range and not an exact amount. But you want to have a clear plan for each trade and stick to your stop loss. And also you want to have a limit order in for your target sell price to sell for at least a portion of your position. And this actually, will help, this actually will help to reduce risk as well because if you're taking some profits at that first target, that first technical target, which we'll get into later in the course on some of our favorite trading setups, if you do that, you actually reduce your, your risk as well because if you're taking some profits off at those, those targets, that reduces your, the money you have in the trade from that point. Okay. And again, being undisciplined will cost you over time with that if you don't stick to the the good risk management rules that I've outlined here, you know, also sticking to a stop loss. And if you if you day trade, buy and sell the same day, it's gonna cost you even more without having not having good risk management and without being disciplined. So very, very important thing to learn about, master, have a set of rules in place. And do that before you risk any real money, certainly, in each trade. Okay, so that about wraps up that video. The next video is going to be all about candlestick charting. And it's going to be a great information to begin to learn how to use the charting that's used by most of the, the top traders out there. So that's our next video, candlestick charting. Okay, if you haven't been to our site yet, please do so. You, there's some really good trading strategies taught on the site. We have our newsletter where we deliver the top trading setups each week. Okay, you can go ahead, just enter your name and email and get uh, three free weeks with no credit card required for that. We also have a book on the site and also video courses that are very reasonable with great strategies that you can learn and start to master 
on a simulator right away. So, okay, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.